Well, welcome, friends, to First Baptist Church Grand Cayman here on Saturday, the 30th of May. Thanks once again for joining us. We turn our thoughts to God's Word from the book of Proverbs. Just recently, the annual Sunday Times Rich List was printed. It carries the names of those who are from commerce, from royalty, from entertainment, from sport, who are right at the top of the tree with their vast resources. The person who's currently number one for the first time is Sir James Dyson, the well-known inventor and entrepreneur. He's been able to muscle out those who were this time last year first because they have seen their resources deplete by some seven billion dollars. And before we think, well, you would never miss that. Of course, there's all the knock-on implications to the folk who work for them and may be out of a job as a result. But these are eye-popping amounts, aren't they? These are kind of telephone numbers uh, internationally, huge resources. And and the truth is that as we look at at, uh, such things, for most of us, we need to hear some reality therapy from uh, Proverbs just a few chapters before we read in Proverbs 23. Do not wear yourself out to get rich. Have the wisdom to show restraint. Cast a glance at riches and they're gone for they'll surely sprout wings and fly off to the sky like an eagle. It's just emphasizing, isn't it, that as Paul puts it, we brought nothing into this world and we'll take nothing out of it. And in context there, of course, is the well-known and often misquoted money is the root of all evil. When the truth is, of course, the accurate quotation is the love of money is the root of all evil. And so why is that important? Well, because the truth, again, is that you may be a billionaire and have no love for money. There are well-resourced, fine, committed Christian people who honour God and use their vast resources for his glory and the extension of his kingdom in a whole multitude of ways. And at the other end of the spectrum, there are folk who are not particularly poor, but they're not that well off. But you've only got to say of them that they are absolute scrooges. They're always thinking of the cost of everything. They're always thinking, well, if I only had more, I'd do more, when the truth is they don't do enough with what they've already got. And that's why our verses in chapter 30 today are important. May I read them to you? Two things I ask of you, Lord, verse 7. Don't refuse me before I die. And then verse 8. Keep falsehood and lies from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only what I require for my daily bread. Otherwise I may have too much and disown you and say, who's the Lord? or I may become poor and steal, and so dishonour the name of my God. I uh, suspect you might notice in there that little phrase, daily bread. (laughs) It's echoed in our Lord's Prayer, isn't it? Give us this day our daily bread. And as we know, one of the fallouts from this great pandemic is not just going to be folk getting coronavirus, but the hundreds of millions of people who are struggling and will struggle for their daily bread as industry collapses, as economies go bust, and as people scrape and scrimp around just to get through a day at a time. That's why here at First Baptist, amongst other things, we have been particularly concerned for those who are not Caymanian, for those who can so easily from other cultures and other nations fall through the cracks and to be on the front foot with other churches here to make sure that folk do not suffer unnecessarily and may get their, quote, daily bread. And so here's a great prayer. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Somebody put it in uh, rather budding poetry words like this. Give me heaven a middle state, neither too humble, neither too great, with just enough to meet life's ends and something left over 
to share with my friends. Hmm. Well, the Lord doesn't mind you having something left over to share with your friends, and I'm sure Jesus would add, and your neighbors, and your family, of course, and even your very enemies. Thanks for joining us today. May you have a, a great Sunday and look forward to seeing you, the good Lord willing, on Monday morning, the 1st of June. God bless you. <laughs>